This is called uh, They Never Buried Bob Marley. He meant it for us all when he whispered to Damien, money don't buy life. He could have put it in a song, but only Ziggy heard him say, on the way up, lift me up, and on the way down, don't let me down. Did anybody see the seven rainbows in the sky the day they buried Bob Marley? Did anybody count the shooting stars the night before, announcing his departure? Of the million plus who lined the streets of Kingston to mourn, nearly tilting Jamaica into the sea, did anybody really think he had sung his last song? They never buried Bob Marley. He had too much left to say. And those of us who were listening can still feel the hope of his redemption song, quietly boomboxing the world and rekindling our belief in the power of one love. So you see, even from the grave, as long as we have ears to hear and hearts to bleed, they can never really bury Bob Marley any more than they can bury the truth. It's like what happens every time you try to step on a light. As soon as you move your feet, you realize that the light didn't go anywhere. You just had to be moved to see it again. And Bob Marley moved us. This roots, rock, reggae, revolutionary, this rude boy, this Rasta prophet, he still has too much left to say. So get up, stand up, it's okay. They never buried Bob Marley. what I'm still, still trying to work on, it's kind of like what Adrian was saying you know, in one of your pieces, you said, it wakes you up and makes you finish it. I was agonizing over this. It's, the theme is gentrification, but it's about exploitation in general. That's just one of the ways that America mistreats people that it says it loves. And this is called America on My Doorstep. I was sitting in my living room, drinking hands quietly enjoying my favorite TV show, when my peace was abruptly shattered by a violent lock at my door, a knock so thunderous that it threatened to shake the foundation of my house and forever destroy my assumption that I could be peaceful and safe in my own home. In the heart of the city, in this place where dreams are seldom allowed to breathe, only gangsters and those who want to do harm are bold enough to knock like this. So I grabbed my gun, I look out the window and I begin to tremble, justifiably terrified by what I see. It was, it was America on my doorstep, in full manifest destiny mode, crudely delivering the message that she intended to plant a flag in the dirt that I thought was mine. So I decided to turn off all the lights, hoping to be spared. But like all good gangsters, America feeds on darkness, especially when she has a new drug to sell and I never received any offer. There was nothing I could refuse. When I reluctantly opened the door, America snatched me by the collar and just shoved gentrification down my throat, forcing me to swallow it whole or risk choking to death if I resisted. And in the haze and the shell shock of this unwanted change, I recalled America famously once asking the world to give her, her give her your tired and your poor and between gags, I kept screaming like deaf ears, I am your tired and your poor. I'm already here. My family spent generations to finally own this home, and now suddenly I can't even have the right to live in it. I can't comprehend this homogenized urban utopia that America is fast peddling. I never received an invitation, and obviously can't afford the price of admission. But I do know that in America, no matter who suffers, if it makes enough money, it never has to make any sense. So let this be a wake-up call for you as well, because money has no allegiances, everyone has a doorstep, and anyone can be gentrified. Thank you.